is the prayer and consuming purpose of these Greymoor friars. They are the spiritual sons of the famous Father Paul of Greymoor, who was a 20th century Franciscan friar, an energetic priest of great vision and unlimited faith in God, which inspired him to astounding accomplishments. The story of Father Paul's Greymoor Friars begins in 1893 with a dramatic act of faith to discover the name for the religious community he was to found and later to enkindle with his own unquenchable apostolic fervor. When visiting Greymoor today, it doesn't take long before a natural wonder about this place begins to unfold. The grounds, the shrines, the pathways. It all speaks to decades of activity and service to the church and humanity. Referred to by many as the Holy Mountain, Greymoor has witnessed the tireless commitment of the Franciscan friars and sisters of the atonement for over a century. That long span of service has left both intentional and unintentional markers of stories worth hearing. The Greymoor Archives conserves the legacy of Father Paul and his dedicated friars. The journals, writings, and other artifacts within tell even more stories that expand our curiosity. What is at the heart of this wonderfully unique place and the community of religious men whose history was born here? Popular walk takes many visitors to the Founder's tomb. Engraved on the tomb are the words that they all may be one. These words from John 17, 21 are the very cornerstone this religious community was founded on. In the 1890s, Father Paul Watson, as a young priest, was consumed by a growing spiritual hunger for Christian unity. So deep was this desire that when searching scripture for a name for his new religious community, he was moved by the words of Romans 5.10. We joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. At that moment, Father Paul recognized in the word atonement, at one meant, a special unity given to us through the loving grace of God. In 1908, Father Paul began promoting a church-wide week of prayer he called the Church Unity Octave. Today, it is known as the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity and is observed among Christians worldwide. Promoting dialogue between people of different religious faiths remains an urgent mission for the friars. They foster this through a center in Rome called Centro Pro Unione, and through the Graymore Ecumenical and Interreligious Institute in New York City. These centers foster dialogue and support research as well as provide conferences and lectures. In a world with so much division, the Friars of the Atonement believe, as Father Paul did, that promoting understanding, reconciliation, and unity on a religious front is central to healing divisions on every front. Father Paul understood that the hearts, minds, and souls of men and women are always in need of spiritual food for the journey of life. To this end, he aspired towards being a missionary to the world. Though he rarely left Greymore, stories of Father Paul and his spiritual outreach traveled far, often appearing in local and national publications. Always eager to share the gospel and expand the Catholic faith, Father Paul embraced many means of communications. He wrote monthly newsletters and later published The Lamp magazine that attracted thousands of subscribers. The Graymore Friars present the Ave Maria Hour. Mary, Mary. Here, Deborah, by the wine jar. Mary, Jesus is at Bethsaida. What? In 1935, Father Paul launched a radio show called the Ave Maria Hour. 
distributed on vinyl records, the 30-minute program was recorded in New York City and on the grounds of Greymore. It featured prominent actors of the day in dramatizations of the lives of the saints, stories from the gospel, and inspiring accounts of faith. By 1937, the Ave Maria Hour was airing on 125 stations with an estimated audience of one million listeners tuning in each week. The show won many awards and national acclaim and continued until 1969 with over 2,500 episodes. Through all of this, Father Paul remained a simple Franciscan. He spent his life living out of a small, sparse room in the friary and remained committed to gathering every resource available in order to assist as many people as possible. He established the Union That Nothing Be Lost as a special collection and fund to ensure the continued help to those in need. Today, the thrift shop at Graymore bears this name and continues this legacy. Nestled toward the top of the hill, there is an outdoor shrine dedicated to St. Anthony of Padua. Father Paul had a great devotion to this 13th century Franciscan, whom he lovingly referred to as our big brother. Whether in times of great need or simply misplacing his quill pen, Father Paul would often call upon him for intercession and time and again, St. Anthony would assist. The shrine attracts thousands each year who come on pilgrimage with their own prayers and petitions. As a follower of St. Francis, the poor saint of Assisi, Father Paul exemplified a simple Franciscan practice, hospitality. In 1900, he opened his meager lodgings to a homeless man who came looking for help. At that moment, the seed of St. Christopher's Inn was planted. St. Christopher's Inn began as an old shack, and many times over the years, newer lodgings have been built to accommodate the endless flow of men seeking shelter. What began over 100 years ago as a welcome to one man in need, today continues in the form of a homeless shelter and a nationally recognized addiction treatment center that has brought recovery to countless lives. The spirit of hospitality and healing has been exemplified by the friars in many ways over the years. Notably, in the 1950s, Father Dan Egan, kindly nicknamed the Junkie Priest, began a ministry in New York City to assist female inmates at a notorious detention center who were trapped in a cycle of drug addiction. The Friars supported Father Dan's ministry and established New Hope Manor at Graymore in 1970. Later, it became an independent not-for-profit. Now located in Barryville, New York, it celebrates 50 years of caring for women in need. Hospitality at Graymore is also extended through the Spiritual Life Center. Opened in 1970, the Friars welcome pilgrims and host special programs such as Bible studies, days of reflection, and weekend retreats. In 1988, at the height of the AIDS epidemic, Father Bob Warren and the Friars of the Atonement welcomed people with HIV AIDS for a special retreat. While most of the rest of society was turning these people away, the Friars recognized the importance of offering support just for them. This began a ministry called Do Not Fear to Hope an award-winning program that continues to offer peer support groups and retreats. While exploring the less traveled paths, one may encounter the San Damiano House and Farm Program. This was started in 2017 as a transitional living opportunity for men who have completed the recovery program at St. Christopher's Inn, but wanted to continue outpatient treatment and needed housing. The program's unique structure allows the men to stay for several months in order to become independent and firmly rooted in their recovery, with the opportunity to give back by assisting at the farm. Though Father Paul remained mostly at Graymore, he encouraged his friars to go down from the mountain in service to many corners of the globe. And the friars have. They've served in Catholic parishes, 
prison ministries, as hospital chaplains, and in remote missions in the U.S., Canada, and abroad. Walking the grounds, experiencing its rich history, Greymoor remains true to its vocation as the Holy Mountain, a unique place illuminated by the heart of at one As the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement venture ahead, continuing to fulfill Father Paul's mission, their hearts and hands are guided by the humble credo of St. Francis. We have been called to heal wounds, to unite what has fallen apart, and to bring home those who have lost their way. <laughs>